It's a beast. I'm gonna need a drill. This is the Antamsis Pro 410. So on the packaging, uh, there was what they call the quick start guide. And the first step on the quick start guide is we need to get the stuff out from inside the printer. And we're gonna do that from the back. There's this little 3D printed tool here that fits right on these nuts. And we'll be able to unscrew them and take this entire back panel off. All right, so to get this stuff out, we need to raise up the bed here. And the Z lead screw is in the back, which is why we had to pull that back cover off there. So let's go around back and we're just gonna twist the lead screw by hand to raise this up. So the manual says to rotate the screw clockwise. So we're gonna go this way. And it just says manually, and it shows you kind of grabbing it. So just move it a little bit. You know, we only need maybe a centimeter or so of clearance. And if we're lucky, we have just enough clearance to get that out. And then we should be able to slide all of these boxes out of here. Let's go. On the top of each, we've got a packing list of all the materials inside there. Uh, including their part numbers if you ever need to order replacements. And not sure what's in this one, but we'll find out. Now we're gonna go in the top and we need to release these blocks that are stopping the XY motion from jiggling around during transit. This top has these like gas struts that will hold it up for you. And then in here, you can see all these little red tags. We gotta remove these things. So there's one here. There's also one over on this side and one right here as well. Um, so this is stopping the Y direction, and this is stopping the X direction, and this is our beefy hot end assembly there. Um, so we're gonna need an Allen key to uh, release those bolts. All right, so in that uh, parts box that had that label on it, we've got some Allen keys along with pliers, tweezers, USB sticks, micro SD, cleaning nozzles, a couple different USB cables, three maybe, and then a sharpened scraper. And underneath that tray of parts are more parts. So we've got two spools of PLA here, We've got some air filter material, some heat resistant gloves. Um, these are little brushes. They look like metal brushes, not nylon. Um, and then there's like an unclog stick, I think they're calling this. Uh, a very long feeler gauge, you know, for leveling and whatnot. Uh, and a double-sided Allen key. All right, we're at the stage where we're gonna fill the printer with coolant. So the coolant goes in through this little trap door down there. So we're gonna need an Allen key. And we're gonna use the funnel that came in the accessory kit there. You do have to, on your own, go and acquire what they call anhydrous engine coolant, um, which in our case is just engine coolant or antifreeze uh, without water added. So anhydrous meaning no, no water, um, so concentrated. Uh, and that has a capacity of uh, one liter. You're supposed to fill it between 750 and 900 milliliters. So we'll do our best to keep it under one liter for sure. Um, if it's under 600 milliliters, there is a low fluid level sensor that will be triggered on the machine. So then we'd know we need to top it up a little bit still. So just take out these four screws. You know, we had this panel off earlier, the whole panel at the beginning. So in the manual, it shows this right here as being the tube that we're gonna put the funnel into. This cap, there we go, don't lose that and then throw our funnel in here. We can kind of angle it out a little bit. The funnel barely fits in. Okay. And then very carefully and slowly, I'll add the coolant. So I've clicked the power switch where the power cord goes in at the back and then pressing the button on the screen it should come to life. There we go. All right, so it booted up. It takes a little bit to boot up. Um, you can hear that there's this triple beep that's happening. I'm not sure what that means, but we're gonna take a look here, see if we can get more information. Um, it does have the wrong date, but the correct time. Anyway. Here we go, low cooling liquid, uh, cooling liquid level is too low, add some more. So it looks like even though I thought I added 750 milliliters, apparently I didn't. Um, so I'm going to continue topping that up. And in this case, I'm gonna leave the printer on while I'm doing that and hopefully it just clears itself once I've got enough in there. All right, so this stopped beeping after a little bit, which tells me that we are at 600 milliliters, so I added about 150 more to bring us up to that 750. Uh, as I said, it can take up to 1,000 milliliters. Um, but now with that air cleared, here's what we're left with. 
So U disk is going to be our USB disk. Uh, we have other options, SD, FTP, and flash. Um, we're just going to leave it on U disk for now. Uh, we can see that the current temperature of nozzle one and two, so left nozzle and right nozzle, 22 and 23 degrees respectively. Build plate is 20 and chamber is 21. Um, if we hit open here, there's nothing on the USB disc because, well, we don't have a USB disc inserted. Um, get out of here. Cancel, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna, um, as per the quick start guide, we're gonna calibrate the clamping force for each of the extruders. We'll start with the left. We need to take this, um, I think they called it like a clamping rod, uh, which is used to gauge the clamping force. And we'll push down on the quick release coupling and pull this out like that. Then we're gonna go to system. And we are going to click on this little arrow. And then we're gonna click on the, um, the dot, dot, dot beside the left clamper. There we go. That's gonna clear the setting. Yes, we wanna do that. There we go. Then it says to press that little arrow again to let the two gears close, get closer and closer. So I've got the little wire in the hole there where the filament would normally going, be going. And I'm going to hit this. Uh, I guess, yeah, we want it to go this way. And I'm kind of moving the, the rod up and down. I think it was at one point something when we cleared it, right? I can start to feel a little bit of drag, okay. And you're supposed to have this set so that it will hold the calibration bar um, and hold it in position without the help of your hand. So right here, it's, it's not quite enough. Right there is good. Okay, so we're gonna set that. And then we're gonna do the same with the right clamper. So yes, I'm gonna put the tube back in the left one and pull the right tube out and do exactly the same thing, throw that bar in there. Okay, so we've now done the extruder clamping force calibration. Surprisingly, they're both almost exactly the same number. And it does mention in the manual that a higher number here essentially means a stronger clamping force. Okay, so now we're ready to install the build plate and the junk box. So we'll hit axis, and then we're gonna home X, Y, and Z. So that's home X and Y. Okay, we could have hit home X, Y, Z all at the same time, but I just did X and Y. Home is at the front here, and then I'm gonna home the Z. Okay. And now we're gonna move 100 millimeters at a time, and I'm gonna bring the Z down. Okay, so I brought it down 300 millimeters, um, which it says that's the max I should bring it down right now. And then we're gonna install the heat bed on there. So on the, on the build plate here, um, there's a matte side and a glossy side, so glossy side up. And this says inside, so that's gonna be at the back. And it matches the cutout contour of the back of the, the build plate. This is gonna go like that. And it just kind of sits in these little pockets that are in the corners there. You still have your knobs for your traditional manual leveling. So the junk box looks like this. Um, if you can't find yours, it's inside your filament drawer um, wrapped in bubble wrap. And there's these two little either magnets or just metal and there's magnets on the other side. Either way, this just slides up underneath and there's two little grooves for the sides of the bracket. So it's not quite flush against the back. You can fit your hands behind there, um, but the front of it should be in line with this. And then the magnets actually um, hold it onto the metal plate here. Um, but this will catch all the little goobers that get knocked off the, the nozzles from those brushes. So before we actually get to loading the filament, one cosmetic thing we forgot, now that we've got this off of the skid, is we can uh, put these little kick plates in that kind of hide the wheels and everything under there. 
You'll notice that there's these little notches here. There are fingers that hang down that kind of slide into these notches and that's what we bolt into on the sides. Um, one of your two trim pieces, the front and the back are identical. One of them is gonna have the little bag of screws that will contain the screws for both of them. So there's eight screws, one, two, three, four, front and back, right? So we have three prints here. These are all ABS, being that this is an engineering grade machine, we're not really gonna be printing PLA on here. We're gonna be printing ABS, ASA, maybe even some peak or all tem, depending, um, and you know, glass fiber filled, carbon fiber filled variants. Um, right now, these are just ABS for our first three prints. Um, we have a little spaceman here. He was printed with a default ABS profile, which I believe is 250 on the hot end and 90 on the bed. Um, regardless, printed great. The default profile has kind of conservative speeds. I mean, this is a larger printer. Its claim to fame is not speed. I believe it was 60 and 90 with 200 travel millimeters per second. Um, but regardless, we can just take a look in the slicer, which I believe is a fork of Cura. Um, and it turned out just fine. Um, you know, kind of a standard print. A little bit of droop here on the, uh, on the one hand. Uh, things were a little bit hot, and this was just using kind of a standard high temp ABS. You know, I do have some ABSs that melt rather low. They're ABS blends of sorts. Um, this was a higher temp one, um, but maybe we could have done with a little bit of fan cooling or lower temps there. And then we have a little nut with like a little hex head on it. Um, this turned out perfectly fine. Nothing really to speak of there. And then we have this, I don't know what to call it. It's almost like a turbine impeller kind of thing. Um, and this is kind of an interesting uh, use case. So we obviously printed this in multicolor here. And this model is actually a collection of bodies. So each of these is an individual body with this base black piece being uh, a separate body. And so they're kind of sat into slots in that other body. Now the default way that this prints is that each of these blades from top to bottom are entirely one material and the base is another material. Um, or in this case, same materials, just different colors. You get the point. Um, and in doing that, you could press on these and just kind of snap them off. There's a setting in the slicer called bodies overlapping. And bodies overlapping, what it does here, you can see along the side here, is that it interlaces alternating layers of this color and this color where those two bodies intersect. And that provides a very, very strong joint where those two bodies intersect. Uh, and likewise, they are kind of embedded into this center cylinder here in the middle. Um, and these are like rock hard. I mean, oh, I actually made it almost crack a little bit there, but I was pushing really hard. Uh, whereas before, I don't even have the other one to show you because everybody was snapping them off and it ended up getting thrown out. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature if you are doing um, multicolor prints where they are discrete bodies that are kind of slotted into one another like this, um, that interlacing of those layers really increases the strength of your part while still being able to have that, that multicolor ability, which is kind of cool. So it's a very capable printer. This is obviously a very simple test print use case just using standard ABS. Uh, we're gonna run it through the paces and run some more engineering grade materials through there and do some much larger prints and start printing off some customer jobs as well. So hopefully you found that useful. Remember, like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos like this. Thanks for watching.